Okay, thank you for coming. Um, I'm here to provide an update regarding the murder of Geoffrey McLean, whose dismembered remains were located in a vacant block in a wheelie bin at 23 Cheviot Road, Salisbury South, on the 24th of October 2022. Investigators have now identified the origin of the wheelie bin that Geoffrey was located in, um, and that was used to jump his, dump his torso at that location. Inquiries have established that the green waste bin that he was located in has been stolen from a premises, a domestic premises or a house, at Eastview Street at Brahma Lodge. We believe that that wheelie bin was stolen around the time of the murder or subsequently in the weeks post his murder and that was then used to dump him at that location. The house where that wheelie bin was stolen from was approximately 900 metres from uh, the vacant block at Cheviot Road and unfortunately it wasn't immediately noticed missing by the owners um, but now has been reported as missing. Investigators have spoken to the owners in the last 24 hours and we've ruled out any involvement um, of members at that house uh, with the death of Geoffrey. Today we're appealing for members of the public uh, that may be able to assist the police investigation that either saw people taking that wheelie bin from a premises in Eastview Street at Brunner Lodge or wheeling that wheelie bin towards uh, Cheviot Street at Salisbury South or whether they've seen actually anybody that was actually loading a wheelie bin in the vicinity of Eastview Street at Brahma Lodge into a vehicle around the time or subsequent to Geoffrey's death. Today we'll be conducting a letter drop in the vicinity of Eastview Street at Brahma Lodge um, and a letter will be placed with all residents there at all home addresses for them to contact police if they have knowledge of the theft of that wheelie bin and the subsequent movement of that. We'll also be seeking, even though it's, there's some time has been passed, to identify if anyone has any dash cam footage between the 18th of August 2022 and into the early weeks of September 2022 in Eastview Street at Brahma Lodge or in Cheviot Road at Salisbury South or in the vicinity. It's likely that those that have stolen Willie Bin are responsible for Jeffrey's murder and we can't discount at this stage whether those people involved actually live in the near vicinity of that location or actually have local knowledge in that area. Further, we were seeking uh, further assistance the other day from a, a caller that contacted us uh, immediately after or soon after Jeffrey's body was located on the 24th of October 2022. That member of the public may not have seen the previous media release. They have extremely accurate and detailed information which we would uh, like to speak to them further about. And I ask that person if they hear this media release to actually contact police at their earliest opportunity through Crime Stoppers and speak to members of the pub, speak to members of the major crime investigation branch. As I said, we're seeking assistance with anyone that may have dash cam uh, in the vicinity of Eastview Street at Brahma Lodge in Cheviot Road at Salisbury South or in the roads in close proximity in the last two weeks of August 2022 and into September 2022. We're also seeking the previous Crime Stoppers caller to recontact police and I ask anybody with any information in relation to the theft of the wheelie bin, the previous offence of violence committed against Jeffrey or his murder to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 000 to speak to Major Crime Detectives tonight. I'll now take any questions. Um, obviously, his torso was found in the room. Is there any progress in locating the rest? Um, what we've learned in the last 48 hours since the last media release, we've had um, assistance from members of the public and from other areas. Identifying where this wheelie bin has been stolen from will now give us uh, further investigative opportunities to actually identify where his remains are. Locating his remains are a priority for the South Australian Police and Major Crime. We would dearly like to um, return his remains to his family. This letter drop, how many properties are you going to be visiting? Yeah, uh, we'll letter drop in excess of 100 properties this afternoon. Uh, the reason we're doing a letter drop is we can uh, get that information to as many members of the public in a timely fashion um, because if we'll subsequently conduct a door knock for those that we don't hear from, 
but obviously when we do conduct door knocks, not everyone's home, but if we conduct the letter drop, we should get a greater reach to the public in a short period. You're piecing this together, you're progressing this investigation. What message do you have though to those who have a secret uh, and have done this to Jeffrey? There's, there's a couple of messages. Firstly, if anyone has knowledge of what's occurred and they have had some involvement or they've had limited involvement, I ask them to come forward and assist the police investigation. There are ways which we can support those people. And secondly, I'm very confident that we will hold those to account that have committed this gruesome murder and identify who murdered Geoffrey and what roles they've had in his death. There was some garden tools, I believe, that you were trying to see if you could tra trace you know, where they'd come from. Have you had any sort of progression there with that investigation? Yes, that, that's progressing. And um, the investigation is progressing very quickly. We've identified um, outlets that stock some of those items. Um, as I said, in addition to that, we've received other information and assistance as well um, to progress the investigation in the last 48 hours. Previously said that drugs weren't a motivation. Is that still the case? And are you closer to working out why? Drugs aren't the motive in this incident. Um, we do have a number of distinct theories, but due to where the investigation is at, I don't want to disclose them at this time. Um, it may actually inhibit the investigation if we were to release what we believe has occurred. I know, you know, you have spoken publicly about this crime that's been committed, but again, to reinforce, um, could you reflect on just the gruesome nature of this crime and, and how shocking it is what's happened to Jeffrey? Yeah, the, listen, the, the, nature of the, the nature of the crime is such that you wouldn't wish this to happen to anyone you know to. I can only imagine uh, the pain that it's causing his family. I've never been in that position. Um, but the behaviour and the nature in which the way he's been killed and disposed of I hope there are members of the public that actually want to assist the police, or more importantly, assist the family in getting answers and actually obtaining the outcome that's required to put those people before the courts. Um, this person that has tipped off, uh, you've gotten some very valuable information, accurate information from the crime, from crime stoppers. Um, how crucial is that to the investigation at the moment? And, and again, a message to them. Yeah, so to that member of the public, they've given very detailed information. We need some sm further small detail from them and we need to speak them as a matter of urgency. We believe that the information that they hold could go a long way to progressing uh, an outcome in the, in a, and arrest in relation to Jeffrey's murder. This person obviously knows something about what's happened. Can they be implicated by contacting you? Um, what I will say, if people have had a minor role in offences of this nature, there are ways in which the police can support those people they should not fear coming forward to us. Um, they should actually come to us, speak to us, and there are ways at which we can afford them uh, some comfort and ensure their security and their welfare to progress the investigation. Is that to say that is the case in this scenario, that this person may have a minor? I, I can't comment on that. Um, it's very difficult to know. All I can say is that the information we've been provided by a number of people now is very accurate and very reliable. And um, if we can have that person come forward, um, as I said, if they have had minor involvement, there are ways which we can uh, assist those people and support them through the process. Does police have persons of interest in this matter, in this investigation? Yes, yes we do. How many people do you think there is now involved in this matter? Um, I won't say how many people we, be, we believe are involved, but what I will say is we believe that there are people that have had uh, varied roles and um, this this offence or this murder wasn't, wasn't committed by one person on their own. I was going to ask about the, um, I don't know if this is the right word, but attempted abduction of Elizabeth North. Yeah, no, I won't, I won't speak to that. That would be done by Northern Districts. Okay. Who have carriage of that investigation. And just quickly, in court today, there's um, been some uh, a development on the uh, uh, Michael Purse investigation. Are you able to shed any light on what's happened in court and, and any updates for the investigation? Yeah, no, as, as that matters before the courts, um, we won't be making any comment this time. Is there any updates on the missing man from the cattle station in Iowa? 
Um, no, not at this time. As said, major crime don't have carriage of that investigation at the minute, but we can find some details out for you later if you require. And is there an update uh, on the search and the reservoir? Okay. Um, so the search for Geoffrey Mundy at the Maiponga Reservoir uh, will conclude today. Um, unfortunately, at this stage, we haven't located any uh, human remains at that location. Um, we will be reassessing whether there are other areas within the Maiponga Reservoir that we need to search to exclude that as one location where his body may, may have been disposed of. Um, but as we've identified previously, that um, that's one of a number of waterways where his remains may have been disposed of. So the investigation team will now critically assess um, what's occurred over the last three days, um, speak with our water operations unit to identify if there are any areas that we need to finalise that location, and then in subsequent weeks we'll look at searching uh, further locations. Why has this investigation wrapped up quicker, essentially three days? I know we sort of flagged perhaps a week. Um, can you tell us about how they've worked? Yeah, yeah um, with with all searches of this nature that we conduct, um, obviously we do an assessment on how quickly we can get through those areas, and uh, sometimes they take longer, and sometimes they can occur in a shorter time frame. But um, of importance is we will now sit down with the water operations unit, assess what they have done, and there may be areas, if need be, that we need to go back and exclude as well. Is there another body of water that might be next? For to consider searching? Yeah, there, there's a number of waterways which we'll need to consider what we do with, and as I said, they'll be assessed in coming weeks, and we'll make a decision on uh, what the best ways to progress those searches or the investigations around that. Um, you've provided some footage recently of, I guess, the lack of visibility down there, the really tough conditions. Can you talk to us about the conditions that your colleagues have been working in? Um, I think the other day, Superintendent Bray said they're, they're diving at about 42 metres in depth, um, it's in near darkness at that location. Uh, they're having to work through the floor of the, uh, the the reservoir area. Extremely difficult and it's extremely challenging for them to undertake that role. Um, so th they've done an extremely good job to cover the area they have in the, in the time that they've done it. Did you yeah. find anything else peculiar down there while they were searching? Yeah, I won't comment on that this time. Is there a chance that Mr Mundy's remains may have decomposed? Um, and have they been able to find anything because of that? No. It, due to the nature um, of unidentifiable human remains, um, we should be able to locate, if someone is disposed of, we should be able to locate their skeletal remains. Um, unfortunately, at this, at this time we haven't. Um, but as I said, locating um, Jeff Mundy's remains are also a priority to major crime, and um, we'll reassess where we're at and look at further avenues of inquiry to locate his remains. There's been a couple of searches now with, the, with this investigation, uh, sort of the task force Southern, that um, are yet to come up with physical remains of uh, some of the victims that you're looking for. Is it frustrating for police at the end of these searches to not have anything at this stage? Um, with any search we conduct, obviously um, it's not frustration. We're disappointed that we haven't been able to achieve our outcome. But it, it's really important for us that we then go back reassess um, because we do have information come from multiple areas. And what I will say with any of the Task Force Southern murders, if people do have knowledge of where these remains are, I ask them also to come forward and assist those investigations. Um, you know, we're confident that if we keep working hard enough that we'll locate um, the bodies of the victims, but it sometimes doesn't occur as quickly as we would like. Thanks, guys. Thank you.